Hello, welcome back, Fred in the Shed, and another video on this little 70 centimetre magnetic loop antenna that was sent in for, from Bangor for what was supposed to be a straight review. And uh, well, we've ended up probably a little series of videos now trying to get this antenna to work on 11 metres, the CB band. And also just trying to understand it because as you remember on the first video it came with no instructions. Um, it's pretty easy to set up, it's quite basic, but this ballon and things, we don't know whether we should, be, should be using this ballon on HF or whether that's for VHF, we're not really sure. And the controls, we know the top one's frequency, we know the bottom one is uh, the impedance for the SWR, we've worked out what the band switch does, but we just didn't, wasn't able to get it to tune on CB, SWR was well high, 8 or 9. Obviously, going to have to get a little bit more technical minded, <laughs> which is a new thing for me, isn't it, on this antenna. So really what we need is an antenna analyzer so we can find out exactly where this loop is resonating and that will help us with the tuning. Fortunately I have something that will do the job. Got this little nano VNA, this vector network analyzer and we can use this as an antenna analyzer. It will tell us exactly at which frequency the antenna is resonating and give us an SWR reading. So hopefully when we get this connected we can find out exactly how high we can get this antenna tuned because at the moment, I'm sorry, but I can't get it up to 27 so megs with the little nano VNA setup. It's very, very difficult to film this in daylight. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to use that fleece over the camera. But I've got a little pig, pigtail on there, and we've got that going to the magnetic loop. Now, the first couple of things that I've learned straight away is that you do need this little ballon in place. When I took the ballon away the antenna was tuning between 400 and 500 megahertz which yeah that does put it up into the 446 band for HF work it appears you do need that in place also the SWR control as I found with the CB radio that does need to be set onto the lowest part of the scale to bring the SWR down on the top part of the scale that's a bit interesting because I found that it's actually tuning towards 11 meters, 27 megs when I turn it this way and not the other way how it seemed on the CB radio. So what I should do now is I'm going to put the camera up to the VNA and then I will tune this to this anti-clockwise and you'll see the little peak on the meter, you'll see that travel across as um, we sort of head down towards 20 and 40 meters. I appreciate that was really difficult to see and to get focused, so I've taken a still shot. What we're looking at here is the low peak of the SWR, and we can see at pretty much at its lowest peak, we was on almost 1 to 1, 1 1.13. However, that was on 24 megahertz or 12 meters. What we want this antenna to tune is high 26 megahertz up to high 27 megahertz perhaps just into the 28 megahertz the 10 meter band so it's obvious that things need a little bit of tune if i'm totally honest i really didn't want to take this thing apart but to be fair it's only really a 65 pound antenna so you have to do a little bit of twiddling i suppose that's still worth it now there are four plastic screws that hold the case together they were quite tight and three of them did crack and split whilst I was undoing them, but they did fully undo and I was able to take the case apart. Because the loop was so cheap, I was curious to find out what's inside the box and the specs say it will handle 20 watts. I somehow doubted that and once I looked inside it, yeah, as you can see, these variable capacitors are pretty much what you'd get in a normal transistor radio. They're straight off the shelf. With a magnetic loop antenna, quite high voltages are created inside the variable capacitor. And it's the gap between the plates that decides how much power you can put through it. And these are going to be very, very fine. So I would say probably 5 watts is the maximum you could put through this before you're going to suffer some arcing. At this stage of the video, I'm feeling a little bit lost because I've never seriously 
considered adjusting variable capacitors. I did have a go on an old uh, FM radio years and years ago when I was in my teenage years. I did manage to tune it up to 120 megahertz to get the aircraft band, but of course it was in FM mode and I needed AM, so that didn't work. It's been a couple of weeks since the first part of the video. I did email the manufacturer in China. I emailed them twice actually, and I asked their advice in tuning this antenna. Unfortunately, I didn't get a response, and that is pretty typical when you buy something from China, especially if you buy something cheap. Yeah, it's always 50-50 whether they're gonna come back with any useful advice if they come back at all. So I'm on my own, like I normally am on Freddy in the Shed. Fortunately, I have come across these variable capacitors before. I did build a crystal set radio on a much earlier video, one of those 101 kits, but I did learn something. Now, obviously, when you look at this, um, you've got two variable capacitors. The bottom one is just for the SWR, that's just the impedance. So I'm going to leave that alone at the moment. And then the top one is your tuning capacitor. And then the switch switches this down to 40 meters. And then the other setting is uh, supposed to be 10 meters to 10 meet, yeah, 20 meters to 10 meters. But at the moment, it's only tuning 12 meters. Now there are a couple of adjustment pots on this. Now what I do know about these is you've got two sides of these variable capacitors. There's six pins. The middle one up here is uh, normally earth, both sides. And the top is normally the AM side and the bottom would be the FM side. There's more adjustment on the AM side because when you think of the broadcast band, what's that? 540 megahertz up to 1600 and your FM is 108 to 88 so you need a much wider adjustment so I think as I remember on the AM side it's something like 0 to 160 picofarads and on the FM I think it's like 0 to 20 picofarads don't quote me on that and you've got these two little tuning pots the I believe when I did the shortwave radio I think this one was for the frequency and this one was the oscillation but when I did try to tune my shortwave radio I'll be honest with you I did try and adjust these but I found that it didn't make a lot of difference I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit different with this um, antenna but I am fiddling in the dark I am basically out, a little bit out of my depth but I think what I'll do is I'll get a little black marky pen and I'll mark where these little tuning pots are and then with my non-conductive nylon tipped trimming screwdriver I'll just give perhaps I'll start with this one the oscillation one I'll just give that a little tiny turn and then using that nanometer I should maybe hopefully be able to see a drift in the tuning range um, that's about really all I can do the problem I've got with that meter is it's so reflective and even on it's a dull day like today but I can't seem to get it on camera so I'll probably have to do that off camera and then show you how I got on so that's the plan it's typical Fred in the shed just you know, going to go for it, have a go, see what I can do. But hopefully it will work. Right, hopefully you can see this. So what I've done is using the nanometer, I gave this screw here, this C3 trimmer, I gave it a turn, just like this, and I've already marked it. I'll just give that a little bit more. So I've turned that a fair way, so from there to there. And then that, I could see on the screen, and I'll show you what it looks like on the screen. You could see the lowest part of the SWR swing across. And according to that, I've got the SWR down to about 1.2 on 27.5 megahertz, just thereabouts. So let's see if I can show you how that looked on the Nano. Once again, I do apologise for the reflection on the screen it's quite hard to show you so what's happening now I'm now tuning that trimmer pot and just keep an eye on that lowest peak of the SWR on the screen you'll see that start to drift across to the right and I get it down to about 1.2 I don't see any other way you could do this without a antenna analyzer such as one of these VNA nanos they're about 40 pounds but they certainly do help I don't think you could do this with an SWR meter because of course you'd have to be transmitting at the time of adjustment but anyway I had success let's get back but to it's it. done the job and I'm happy with that so it was that C3 screw which is the oscillation screw on the AM side 
and like I say I've marked it quite a big adjustment but it appears to be fine so I'm going to put all that back together now and then weather permitting because it keeps trying to rain we'll set up a radio and then we'll see what SWR we get. I have allowed, allowed a little bit of adjustment on that top tuning capacitor now so it will now tune well up into 10 meters. I've probably lost a little bit of the 20 meter band because if you shift it one way you're going to lose the bottom end but obviously I'm not a ham so that doesn't really affect me but just bear bear that in mind. <laughs> let's put this back together let's get a little radio in and see what the SWR says. So here we are and have our little setup again with the noise of the construction down the road and it's trying to rain but other than that right channel 20 hopefully you can see that you probably can't but channel 20 UK FM so dead center and I haven't touched anything so there you go we key up we've got an SWR of 10. I have calibrated the meter but this time when I adjust that tuning capacitor we should see this start to drop down. I'll have to do it in two halves and then splice the video together but uh, wish me luck and hopefully we've cracked it. I've marked the switch now to make sure I've got that in the right position. Okay going to um, key up the microphone with my feet, don't ask, and now just going to very slightly tune this dial. Now I know it's very sensitive and you need to sort of tune it and then move your hand away from the antenna because it does affect the SWR but I'm just going to slightly tune that hopefully we'll be seeing that SWR meter come down. So I've adjusted that as fine as I can and now I can use the impedance matcher or the SWR control on the bottom just to bring that down all of the way. I'm going to turn it down slightly. You have to take your hand away because every time you touch it the SWR goes up. Just turning it down as we get close to that 40 there. Pretty much getting a one to one. Maybe 1.2. I think about there is the sweet spot. And that's about an SWR of 1.2. So I am extremely happy with that. It is sensitive. You can just by touching it get it down to one to one but that's a big improvement from the SWR of 7 that I originally had. So just going to do the final check now, we'll recalibrate the SWR meter so we're not cheating, put that onto set, reflected, hope you can see that, it's not very clear is it but oh, there you go, yeah, so I know I'm touching the meter now but an SWR of 1.2 I and mean, I can get it down to 1.1. So what you have to remember though is every time that you change a few channels, you might be okay for two or three channels, but if you change a few channels or you go perhaps from the FM, UK FM onto the mid block, you then have to retune the antenna because it's very, very selective, which is why it's good at rejecting noise. If you've got a lot of noise issues in your home base setup, this could be the antenna for you and I can tell straight away that the radio is now receiving it's very hard to see but uh, yeah we do have some signals coming in so I'm really really happy I'm really pleased that I've got that antenna to tune. The next thing now is to try and get a contact on it and see how sensitive it is. Bearing in mind it's a QRP antenna, I'll only be running four watts through it, so that does restrict my range somewhat, and I'm not expecting this to perform like my 18 foot Antron 99, but hopefully I can get a local contact on it, and we'll see how well it transmits. So stay tuned, that'll be the next part of the video, but I am well happy to have tuned that antenna and got it working.